welcome everyone thank you all for being here this is awesome um without any without wasting any more time i'm karthik and i'm jan we both are reliability engineers at contentful and today we are going to talk about uh dns in kubernetes uh we're going to talk about some issues that we've been having with kubernetes and dns uh how we found this out what are some things that we've been doing to fix this and finally what sort of solution we put forth for this so um so we started seeing a couple of 500 errors and a couple of customers reported to us saying that we're seeing a lot of timeouts we're seeing a lot of latencies from your apis and turns out um they've been uh, seeing a lot of uh, we've been seeing a lot of these dns errors really uh, when two services talk to each other so it just so happens that there's a latency when two services talk to each other which is uh, quite rare because we run within a single data center within a single cluster which is in the same region and what we immediately did was patching things on the application side by setting up um, retries uh, and setting up timeouts while resolving dns so and then we have this dashboard that pretty much shows that we've had this across multiple clusters and across different sort of services so this happens across different stacks it's not just uh, singular to the node js or ruby stack um like any good engineer would do we did the next best thing which was to google and google brought us to this row of articles that basically says uh, yep we are having this as well um here are a couple of solutions that you can try um there's also this bug that shows uh, on the kubernetes repo that says that someone's had uh, a delay of 5 seconds this one's been closed uh, because it's not really related to kubernetes and we'll get to that why in a while so um let's uh, talk about how and why dns is important in kubernetes first so assume that you have a service bar that needs to be looked up from something running on foo it's a basic lookup and if you have kube dns or whatever dns resolver for your cluster you get an ip address back which is the most basic way that someone would use uh, dns within the kubernetes so what sort of actually happens is because you have something called the magic resolve.conf that contains things like your dns resolver that's going to be used something called a search path and something called the end dots so depending on what sort of lookup you're doing here you're just going to say lookup for bar it expands across the search paths so it goes from just bar to bar or default bar at service bar at cluster and this happens because it's missing it does not have five dots just because it does not have five dots it's going to expand it across multiple search paths so you have one lookup that's expanded into four and if you have ipv6 enabled as well this is going to expand into eight so we have eight lookups out of which only one is the real uh, answer to this so um to understand why this can be a problem we need to understand how does udp work uh in linux kernel so there is a linux kernel module called contract so what contract does is it's a table that has a source and destination ip and a source and destination port and that keeps track of connections that are going in and coming out of uh, a specific node or an instance and every time a connection goes missing from this table you can see high response high high latencies and timeouts and this can go back from a single http request and if this dns is not resolved because of uh, because it's not there in this contract table you can see timeouts over there so turns out there is actually a race condition in contract if a single udp packet comes to the same socket at the same time uh one of that can go missing and if one of that goes missing and if one of that is the dns lookup that we want you you are going to see uh, uh latencies and timeouts um there are two kernel bugs for this uh, this is in the netfilt uh, module uh one of them is fixed i'm not sure what the status of is the other one so this happens only for udp so um um the other thing that's important is that aws vpc has its limits the dns server in aws vpc has its limits of 1024 packets per second and if you are doing eight lookups 
uh, for a, every single lookup, you're going to reduce that by maybe, let's say, 128. So that's something that's uh, important to keep in mind as well. With this in mind, let's look at some workarounds. Um, so these are strictly workarounds. These are, none of these really solve the issue. They just alleviate the problem a little bit. So the first thing to do would probably be uh, to add dots to the end, or basically to expand the search path always. And uh, this, in this way, you would reduce the number of lookups from eight to just one or two. Um, this is useful because it, uh, oh, sorry, it, it reduces the lookups, but I think the downside is you need to find each and every uh, you know, DNS lookup or call that you have in your code and then replace that. Uh, the other downside is that this is not really sustainable and it's going to be hard coded in a couple of places. If you just did an NPM install from somewhere, that code is not going to have this sort of an expansion built in. So the other thing is to use something uh, like a TCP uh, instead of UDP for the DNS uh, lookup. So uh, code DNS and cube DNS support uh, a TCP based lookup as well. So uh, this avoids a problem and this avoids a problem that contract has, which was the race condition itself. So uh, the problem here is um, Alpine containers, a lot of Alpine containers come with muscle and muscle does not really support, um, muscle does not really support TCP lookups. This is a glibc feature. And if you use Debian or Ubuntu, it's possible over there. And this does not really solve the VPC limits that we have with uh, the AWS VPC limits. The other thing is to use some sort of a DNS, side, DNS mask sidecar. What you would do in this case is have an extra container as a part of your deployment, which would be running DNS mask. And this DNS mask container will talk to cluster DNS, uh, whatever you've configured that as, and cache all queries for that. And your container would talk to DNS mask and in turn, uh, it would be resolved from that. So um, how this would uh, help is that you don't have uh, to talk to the cluster DNS thereby reducing the node traffic that's going out of a single node. Um, the downsides here is that this needs to be configured per deployment and it needs its own set of resources. So uh, if you have 50 different replicas of a single deployment, it's going to take 50 times the same set of memory and requests for that. Um, one of the last things that can possibly done, be done is uh, since this is a race condition in uh, the module, you can add a little bit of delay every time a packet uh, is sent, uh, every time a UDP packet is sent. And what this can be done using TC. So TC is a tool to create a delay, create a delay in packets, and it can be done via IP tables. Um, so using TC, it introduces a, it introduces a delay uh, via IP tables to a specific packet to, uh, uh, and it avoids uh, the race condition itself. Um, but this creates a brand new snowflake in your infra and it's not, I'm not sure this is something you would want there. So summarize, there are DNS issues in clusters. This is pretty common and everyone sort of knows of this. This is not something that Kubernetes can solve. It's a kernel bug, um, but there are some solutions and there are some workarounds. We're not very happy with the workarounds, but the solutions, that's something that we'll take a look at now. So we were not really happy with all these solutions. We started like expanding all the path. Uh, we still saw some errors. We're like, that's not so great. We can't, we can't use all these solutions. It's not gonna solve the problem for us. Uh, so we started looking at, uh, is there another solution that maybe would fix this uh, uh, once for good? So we stumbled across this um, presentation going from five seconds to five milliseconds. Um, benefits of a no local DNS cache from Pavitra Ramesh and Blake Barnett. So it presents a new solution, a Kubernetes announcement proposal, uh, which is of running a DNS cache on every single node. How many of you actually using uh, node local? Just a few, okay. So this is how it works. It's like you have your uh, client pod and when it does the DNS request, it, instead of sending, sending the uh, DNS request to cube DNS or core DNS, depending on what you use, is you're gonna have a local DNS cache on your node that runs on a kind of magic AP. Uh, and this one will cache all the requests and upgrade the request to TCP before you send it to cube DNS. 
So because it caches, it's going to be faster. Uh, and because it upgrades to TCP, hopefully uh, all the requests that leave your node are not going to be affected by this problem. So we started to look into this and uh, we found like uh, many people using that. We thought this is great, this is going to solve it for us. We just like started deploying this. Uh, and, but while looking for um, DNS issues with Kubernetes, we found uh, this postmortem from the Lando, which was uh, about a DNS outage in Kubernetes cluster. It wasn't related to node local, uh, but what it showed was like core DNS, if configured improperly or uh, just not with enough resources, can crash. So we were like, okay, if it does crash, uh, on, a, on our node, it won't, will it restart? Or how many requests are we losing? That could be really bad. So we started to look, maybe we could run two on every node. How do we, how do we solve this? Uh, and that was actually a quite common request. Uh, many people who looked at this announcement proposal were like, we need high availability. We want two core DNS on every node. Uh, it was a requirement for this uh, announcement proposal to graduate to beta, but then like it was um, found out to be a little bit tricky to implement. Uh, so the requirement was dropped. So right now, I don't think uh, people using node local uh, have a high availability setup. And we're not too happy with that. We were like, we, we're not sure if we want to move around, uh, forward with that. We started deploying it at least once. We had an issue, like a node that came up and had some DNS problems. So we were like, we should back off a little bit. Another thing we saw is uh, because of the way this node cache thing is, is, is built, it's, um, it's mostly like an extension is built on top of core DNS and it makes a lot of assumptions on how uh, core DNS is built and what library it uses. So they had actually a really hard time upgrading to core DNS, like latest, like for a few, uh, for most of the years that we stuck on a version of core, of core DNS, it was like 1.2 something, when the latest was 1.5, 1.6. So many, there were many bugs that were still alive that had been fixed in core DNS uh, latest, but could not be backported because uh, the way uh, was really hard to upgrade in node cache. So they finally solved this a few weeks ago, but it's still like a, a, a difficult process to upgrade uh, core DNS when uh, you upgrade core DNA, um, node cache. So we went back and we thought, what is actually uh, node cache supposed to do? So the only thing it's, it is actually is just a core DNS uh, that runs locally and it needs to set up and configure uh, an interface and add a few IP table rules. Uh, and when it, when it uh, exits, it needs to remove everything. So that's we, our understanding, that's all it should do. Uh, in practice, core, like uh, node cache does a few more things. It tries, like there is a new feature that tries to infer the core DNS configuration from the cube DNS configuration. There is an additional uh, Prometheus endpoint. Uh, we think it does a bit much. And uh, we're thinking it should be uh, the most basic core DNS it could be. So we looked at the core DNS plugin interface and what we saw is that's what it looked like. Like there is a setup function that runs once, uh, just once when the core DNS starts, and there is a shutdown function that runs uh, every time the uh, server shuts down. We thought that's exactly what we need. We can set up the interface here and remove it here, and that's all we need to do. So we could eventually build a plugin for core DNS that would make it work as a node cache. So that's what we did. We uh, wrote a project called Core DNS uh, Node Cache, which is like a, a node cache implemented as a Core DNS plugin. It has a few, uh, it's here. Uh, it has a few good uh, advantages and uh, for uh, a, a few good advantages. First, we say less is more. It has less code. The code it has is properly tested. Uh, in the original node cache, uh, many code paths are not tested. So we, we added a lot of unit tests there. The, because it's a plugin, the configuration is done in the core file. So it's instead of having a mix between like your command line parameters and your configuration file, here is everything in the core file is you just add node cache and it's already configured. And we can really easily upgrade core DNS since we only rely on this two function, this kind of interface with, uh, with core DNS. As long as core DNS doesn't change the plugin interface, which doesn't happen too often, uh, we don't have to change anything in our code to keep up to date with uh, the latest version of core DNS. Uh, and finally, like it allowed us to spend some time and try to get uh, high availability working. About that, 
uh, Cordiness uses something that's called SO reuse port. So SO reuse port is a feature that uh, when Cordiness binds to a, uh, to, to a socket, uh, it will allow to share this socket with other processes. So we can run two uh, instances of Cordiness. They will bind to the same socket and all the requests will be kind of balanced between uh, both processes. So this was already implemented. We didn't have to do anything. So we just configure two different daemon sets to run and configure the same uh, interface. And the only thing we did was add like a, an, an option to, so it doesn't tear down everything when one instance shuts down. So it's always available. What this allows us is to uh, have like two instances running at the same time on the same port. And if one, for whatever reason crashes, it will be restarted, but you still have the other one. And if you, when you want to update also, like just change the version, you don't have to think my pod is gonna restart, I'm gonna lose requests in the middle, so I better not do it. So this is what we are running currently. So our efforts paid off, we think. Uh, there are still a few request errors. It's about like a dozen a day. Keep in mind that's across like 50 servers running like millions and millions of uh, requests per day. So it's like very, very low. Some of them seem to be related to like uh, issues with uh, AWS DNS. So we're pretty happy with the result. It's not, a complete, uh, it's not a complete zero, but that's where we are right now. So it's not completely perfect yet. One of the issues we have with this is uh, same as with node cache. Uh, since it needs to configure and set up an interface and IP table rules, it needs to run as root. So if there was ever, for whatever reason, a big issue in core DNS, people could exploit that and do bad things and it would be better if maybe core DNS would not be running with these kind of privileges. Um, also because we need to set up IP table and the only way to set things up with IP table is to use the IP table um, utility. We have to, um, we can't do like core DNS does have like a from scratch container and with just a binary, we have to have a whole Alpine uh, or Ubuntu and install IP, uh, IP table there. So it's a, a slightly bigger image. So that's like what we're, everything works, we're kind of happy, but these are the things we, we were hoping to tackle in the future. Which brings me to this project, which I started recently. Um, it's a slightly different approach. It's uh, the thought behind is uh, we could isolate all the things for which you need root and a separate Kubernetes operator. So this is using kubebuilder and it would, uh, you you'd define uh, custom resources to create uh, the interface and uh, the IP table rules. So that would be like delegated to uh, another separate operator. And then you would just run two daemon sets of like vanilla core DNS, no changes uh, that would just bind to the interface created by this uh, project. So that's a work in progress, uh, looking for feedback. Right, so what did we learn? <coughs> DNS is hard, when it fails, it's really sad. Uh, especially in Kubernetes, you're likely by default, sometimes you'll see you'll get uh, timeouts unless you actually do something about it. Uh, so use uh, a no local DNS caching server, be it uh, the one we built or the one that's upstream called node cache. Um, there is progress. So like none of these solutions is officially like uh, for general availability, even node cache is still like in, in beta. Ours, I would say, is uh, around the same state. We're using it in production for several months. It seems pretty solid. So yeah, check out, check out CoreDNS node cache and talk to us about uh, DNS problems we were interested. Thank you.